Dang, it's really gloomy out. Not sunny in California today. So if you're wondering, this is what driving around in Beverly Hills looks like. Yes, there's palm trees and there's neighborhoods, but basically it looks, it looks nice, but it doesn't look that nice. Not, especially not what they portray in the movies. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today we're going from Beverly Hills on our way back to downtown. I do have to stop by and get a haircut where it's all local and it's about five miles on all local streets. So we're gonna really put the stop sign and traffic light control to the test to see if it's really jerky or if it's gotten smoother in this recent update. Let's get into the video. Okay, a little bit of braking just early on there. I don't know where it detected, but it looks like on the screen it detected a stoplight or something, but it just immediately started braking, even though there was no stoplight or stop sign at all. Or not that I recognize, maybe there was one in the corner going this direction, uh, but not a great start to this video. We still have another four miles to go or 4.1 miles to go till we get to our destination. And it's gonna take us about 17 minutes in Los Angeles traffic, of course. Looks like we're uh, gonna pass through this traffic light pretty well look turned yellow while we were mid traffic light while we we're mid through the intersection but it went through and looks like we're gonna come to a complete stop in terms of the conditions today it's 91 degrees very muggy out or cloudy out because of all the fires so there's probably a good so there's a lot of smoke in the area in terms of what version this is, this is version 10.2-2020.28.6. It is the latest version as of when I'm recording this video. All right, so it looks like the light turned green, the cars are moving ahead of us, and we are going to go through this intersection. This autopilot just freaked out a little bit, wanted me to grab the steering wheel because it doesn't really know what lane we're in. Uh, it's braking a little bit. I had to press the accelerator to kind of give it that confirmation. It did not like that intersection at all. It was just completely confused and kind of bugging out a little bit. Passed this intersection pretty smoothly. There's another one coming up here. And while a slight turn to the left, pretty smoothly, but kind of hugging to the right side of that lane. We're going about 33 miles an hour and we are going to come to a complete stop behind this truck. So I've noticed it does that. It stops pretty abruptly initially and then it starts to inch up right after that until it finally comes to a complete stop. But yeah, thanks for watching another video, guys. If you're new here, my name is Dennis. I picked up this Tesla Model 3 about a year ago and I make videos about my experience. So if you're interested in any of that, please hit that subscribe. It's detecting this green light right here, so it's gonna go forward through it. No issues. Increasing speed to about 30 miles an hour. The steering wheel wanted my feedback, so I go ahead, went ahead and hit it a little bit. Went ahead and hit the knob. We're just coasting, following this truck. Looks like we're gonna break a little bit. Uh, it's slowing down just a little bit. I've noticed whenever it cannot detect the lanes, it tries to jerk a little bit and tries to uh, jerked left or right to try and figure out which part of the lanes it's in. Looks like we're coming to a complete stop right here. And we've come to a complete stop. Or no, now we're slowing down and now we're gonna be completely stopped. So when the light turned green, there's actually two ways that you can engage it to go forward. You can actually hit the stock down or press the accelerator, but it looks like that used to be the old way and now it's just gonna go ahead and go forward no matter what, as long as the light has turned green. Sometimes I do press on the accelerator to kind of give it that, that extra juice so that it can curry up and go, but it looks like it's pretty much, what, once it detects the cars are moving in front of it and there's a green light, it's just gonna go ahead and proceed forward. So unlike autopilot, when you're on the highway and it does the auto steer and the acceleration and the braking pretty well, and you don't necessarily have to monitor it too much, I do think that the stop sign and stoplight control beta, you do have to monitor it a little bit more just because there's a lot more variables that are going on on the local roads than on the highway, especially if it's in the open road highway. Okay, so the light turned yellow there. The car on the left decided to just go through the light, uh, the yellow light, but Tesla on the more conservative side didn't want to go through it, so it just went to a, and it just came to a stop. So in theory here, with the new update, once this red light turns green, it should just go through the light, but let's see what happens uh, if I have to press the accelerator or not, because in the other situations before, I was always behind a car, but this time I'm actually right at the front of the light, so let's see if it just goes when it turns green or not. 
So far we've driven one mile out of the four. It's 2.7 more to go. It looks like it turns green and no. So you have to kind of give it that confirmation if you're at the front of the light to go through the intersection when it turns green, it won't do it on its own. So that's interesting. If it's behind cars at a light, it will just follow the cars and go through the intersection. But if you're at the front of the intersection at the light, you have to give it that confirmation to go through the light, whether it be by pressing the accelerator or by pushing down on the drive stock. So we're going 40 miles an hour. That's pretty much what we're limited to on the local roads. Breaking a little bit now because it's detected the car and the red light and it's gonna slow down, but it's green light again. So it's gonna accelerate and accelerate through the intersection, falling through the lines flawlessly because that intersection, if you notice, had the dotted lines through the intersection. So it could easily detect where we were at and fall through the intersection. We're about halfway to the destination. We've driven almost two miles, uh, over two miles, and we have another two miles, 2.1 miles to go, and it's gonna take us nine minutes to get there. Okay, so a little bit of braking there, a little bit of jerking. It's slowing down for some reason. It, I guess it can't detect that. It detected that the light was green, but then there was a red line on that light. So I went ahead and just pushed the acceleration because I didn't want the cars behind me to hit me. So I gave it the confirmation to go through. That was a little jerky there. I wasn't really sure what the computer was thinking. Now we detected that car pretty late, I would say. We are going 40 miles an hour and then it just kind of hit on the brakes pretty hard to come to a complete stop. So definitely it's not as smooth as driving or using autopilot on the highway because it is the local road. So you do have to pay attention to it a lot more because it will kind of just phantom brake even though it's braking because it thinks that it needs to stop at a light or a car or some sort of stop sign. Another thing I noticed that was new with this update was I was driving in the city and pedestrian got out of their parked car on the side and I got the same type of beep as if I were about to run into an oncoming collision like a rear end uh, with a car in front of me. So I got that same beep. So I got that same alert like that one as if I was about to hit a car in front of me. So that was really weird. I guess I was trying to inch up forward because the, there was a car that was trying to turn behind me, but then it didn't like how close we were getting to the car in front of us. So it gave that same alert and beep. So this has been a very uh, eventful and jerky ride, not smooth at all on local roads, but as expected, the stop sign stoplight control beta is still in beta, of course. So it's going to have a lot of glitches and a lot of errors while in use. Which not a lot of people realize the autopilot system itself is still a beta product or they say like the auto steer and the navigator on autopilot is still beta. Technically it's not, you know, a full, we're still testing the product and it's not going to be without glitches. So this is pretty interesting. From my view, I cannot see whether the light is red or green. I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but it's somehow the autopilot system has detected that the light is red. All right, I don't see how, it, I guess the camera up here has a better detection or viewpoint, or maybe the one, some of the other cameras can see that the light was red, but somehow it detected that it was green and the car is in front of us and it just, went through and followed through the intersection. Maybe it's because the Tesla autopilot system realized that the car in front of us was stopped. So it just realized that it must be a red light ahead of us. Or the autopilot system didn't detect it at all. And that's why the intersection was labeled red, signaling to us that we need to give it some sort of confirmation to go through that intersection because it doesn't know whether the light is red or green. Yeah, that's definitely cool. It can really detect the stoplights from a pretty good distance and even through all these cars, because I myself in the driver's seat, I can't see the stoplight at all, but I could see on the visualization screen that it could detect that it was a red light or a green light, which is actually really cool. And I'm not sure how they do that. I guess using maybe this camera has a better vantage point than I do with my head, but even you guys have a pretty good angle too. And I'm not sure how they get that, how they're able to see the stoplight at all. If you know the answer, please comment down below. I'd really know, I'm actually really interested to see how they're able to detect stoplights from this kind of angle or this distance. So of course we're in Los Angeles, rush hour traffic, especially in the local roads. Uh, we're in the Koreatown area. Uh, we're almost at our destination. Oh, jeez. Okay, so Zinus Lane, I guess it really detected that the bus was gonna come into our lane, but it really didn't at all. And it just slammed on the brakes. I had to give it the acceleration to go through, but it just completely slammed on the brakes there, even though the bus wasn't in coming into our lane at all. Pretty, like that was like probably worse than a phantom brake because I kind of knew what was going on, but it just completely slammed on the brakes for that bus. Okay, so we started to accelerate and for some reason it's weird. It's, it keeps flashing that it needs some sort of 
steering wheel response, but I keep hitting the steering wheel knobs and it's not going away. So I wonder if one of the more recent updates have kind of nullified that workaround, which would suck because I don't necessarily like kind of jerking the wheel like that because I feel like it's going to throw it out of autopilot. I really like the simplicity of just kind of just hitting the steering wheel knob. So it looks like we're kind of driving through here. We have another 0.8 miles to get to our destination. We're going to get there in four minutes, but this autopilot drive has definitely been a little bit jerky as expected through local roads. Let me know what you guys think and comment below on if you guys have the full self-driving stoplight control beta and what you think of how, if you use it on your daily commutes or if you're driving around or not. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.